Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook. In this episode of Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook, we are spearfishing for crayfish and coral trout along the Great Barrier Reef. It's a system of reefs stretching 2,000 kilometres on the east coast of Australia. These reefs are what dreams are made out of. I have fantasised many hours on Google Earth looking at how to get to these places and we're finally here. Access to these reef lagoons is through small channels with coral either side and large currents pushing us left and right. Care must be taken when entering any sort of reef like this. Fitzroy Reef is 100 kilometres from Gladstone, the nearest port. The coral in the lagoon is pristine. Hello, booby. That's a booby bird. Sitting on the marker there. And we are going this way. Now it was filming there and almost hit the reef. We've probably got about oh, three knots of current here. So a little bit wild coming in. Once again, it's a very, very low tide today. It's um, probably about five or six metres of water under us, but not a lot of room either side. As you can see, coming in very, very close to the reef here. It's looking good at the moment. Are we ready? We are ready! You are ready? Nerida loves jumping in the water. I love snorkeling. Yeah. <laughs> Check out the coral! Yay! Yeah. Conditions are perfect! They are. Look at this nice edge on this one here. There's plenty of bombies. Oh, look at blue. Blue? blue? Yeah. Blue fish. Look, look at the fish. So yeah, I think our spot's up in here somewhere. Exciting! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that one before. So this is the gun I'll be using for the crayfish. It's just a little tiny 42 jet by Mares. Um, you don't need a lot for crayfish and I've got the other gun there so crayfish first and then maybe trout later on. At night crayfish feed around the reef but during the day they hide in little crevices and caves. Here we have some stripies but no crayfish. There was a massive trout in that big hole but he's so wary. All I saw was that much of his tail. But anyway, what I think I have to go out a bit deeper. See the massive crowd of thorns out the middle? No. I'll see if I can show it to you. Yeah. It's like, yeah, big and just sitting right in the middle of the sand.
very hard to get close to these fish. So we're out for a bit of a break. Lots of little fish, very pretty. Gorgeous, great staghorn coral. Not a lot of big fish though, and the ones I did see, very spooky. Massive trout, one of the first holes I went in, he was huge. I only saw like that much of his tail. Um, big red throat, a couple of smaller trout. But yeah, even even the um, like little parrot fish and the uh, surgeon fish, everything, as soon as they see you, gone. So it's gonna be a challenge out here. I think this reef gets spearfished a fair bit. Anyway, we're gonna have a little snack, warm up, and then jump in again, I think. You saw me pick out that big crown of thorns right in the middle of the sand. That was at least half an hour ago, and have a look at that. It's still bleeding. That was through through my thick glove. So, don't pick a crown of thorns up if you can help. How's your lunch with the view? Oh, great. Couldn't ask for a better view. And booby, there's a booby. Oh, there's a booby. That's booby bird. They're black and white booby birds. It's always good after a cold snorkel, isn't it? Mm. Chicken on a boat. Starting to warm up now. And we're going over there, other side of the lagoon. You can't see it, it's too calm. the chicken off my hands so I don't smell like smoked chicken. That way the shark won't be attracted to me. Because I know sharks love smoked chicken. <laughs> they do. Do they? It's a fact. Everyone knows that. Okay. Yeah, favourite food of sharks. Smoked chicken. Pulled up at the second spot. I'm going to grab the big gun and it's a lot deeper here actually. It's probably seven metres deep under the boat. Nice little bay here. I'll just drop the, the pick on the outside of these um, white reef markers. So anywhere on that side you can't actually anchor. On this side you can, so you just got to keep an eye out for those. Within two minutes of slipping over the side I had a coral trout in my sights. Swimming away from me, I aimed, I aimed, I aimed, and he disappeared behind some coral. A second one came out, and he just looked at me and then spooked. Here we have a massive bull ray, one and a half meters in diameter, just having a sleep under a coral ledge. The next coral trout I saw was a long shot, but he kept looking at me, straight at me. He was staring me down, so I waited and waited. Unluckily, he turned sideways and his head went behind the coral. I couldn't take the shot. I to figure it wasn't going to happen. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Not bad size either. Way, yes. 45 <laughs> centimetres or something. Excellent. Let's get back to the dinghy. Let's go back. <sighs> boat first. He's still totally alive. The spear only went through his jaw. So, as with almost all fish, I'm just going to cut his throat. 
and bleed him out. And, um, I prefer not to be in the water when, when he's bleeding in there. I was really starting to get a bit cold. You're pretty cold too. You've got blue lips. I have, yeah. Um, those first few trout on this second dive, much bigger than this guy. But I didn't get a clear shot, so I just didn't take a shot. Um, trout are actually well known for just staring you down, staring you down. And that's what this guy did. He was looking at me, looking at me. And I had to wait till he turned side on and then I took the shot. At least I think that's what happened. I'm, I'm very cold. <laughs> I could see you yeah. lining up the shot. Yeah. And I knew you must have had something over all that uh, uh, staghorn coral there. Yeah, yeah. Because you're very still and you're lined up yeah, you like you are going to shoot. I couldn't see the fish because yeah, yeah. I was around the corner. Yeah. And then I could see you at the trigger and I thought, yeah. you've got one. Yeah. We get to see what whether red throat or coral trout taste better tonight. Oh, how exciting! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that. <laughs> oh, let's get back to the boat. Oh, so good! So good! <laughs> Woohoo! Excellent! So, Nerida can't help herself. She's actually jumped back in the water again. I'm, I'm way too cold to get back in. But she just loves filming coral. Hopefully, she's got some nice footage there, which I'll include right here, actually. It's not bad still, the sun's, sun's nice and high and yeah, the water's just getting lower and lower. So why not jump in the water and film? Here she comes! Come on aboard! Whee! Woohoo! How special are these coral reefs? Amazing! They are, aren't they? Spectacular! Let's go back to the yacht. Let's go. So you saw me aim at a couple of trout, but I didn't actually shoot them because I always like to shoot them in the head. I might have said that before earlier, but let's get the little micro tape measure out and see how big this guy really is. I can't remember what I estimated him as. Hope you guys remember. So let's put that on there. Tip of the tail, 46 centimeters. Get right in there and have a look. So 46 centimeters. All right, I've got a really nice sharp knife to fill it in, and I'm looking forward to seeing how coral trout compares to red throat emperor. So let's get into this. Always like to start right behind the, the head there, go down the dorsal fin, and he's been in the fridge for probably an hour, maybe a bit more than an hour now, and he's nice and stiff and cool. I'm not missing much meat there, which is perfect. I'm going right along the bone. You can hear that. Just over the ribs here a little bit. Oh, I'm going to cut these little bones. There we go. Just skim the knife on the ribs. And there's the trout. You can see almost through the, the bones and the flesh there. That's, yeah, not a bad job if I do say so myself. Once the fish is filleted, I always chuck it in nice, clean salt water. Give it a little rinse, get the scales off. Just drip them off a little bit like that. Now there's quite a bit there. What I think is we might save one uh, coral trout fillet and eat the red throat fillet. So we'll have half and half of each. Half, half a fillet of red throat and half a fillet of coral trout and see what the difference in taste is. I'm intrigued to see which tastes better. You can see the difference in the red throat and the coral trout. This is the red throat here. A little bit darker on the um, bloodline on the skin and this is the coral trout. Nice and light. They're both quite light meat and all I'm going to do is cut them into a couple of manageable chunks. There's actually yeah, some nice big bits of fish here. I'm going to put in a nice chunk of butter in the pan and Throw in, we've got a nice chopped garlic there. So what I'm doing here is I'm making garlic potatoes. I just want to impart the flavour of garlic into the potatoes. I don't want the whole meal to taste of garlic. Just a little bake in the butter with some garlic. 
while I was prepping the fish, Nera to put some uh, broccolini in the pan, in the pot, the steamer. So that's ready to go. Right, I haven't let that butter go too far. I just want to infuse the potatoes with the garlic. Oh, fire alarm! Fire alarm! Oh, she killed it. She whacked it and killed it. There we go. That's what I want. Got a little bit too dark on the top corner there, but they are looking good. Oh boy, they smell yummy. You reckon they smell yummy? Delicious. <laughs> Yum. Potatoes, butter, and garlic. So I've got some nice melted butter. Not quite as much as I put the potatoes, but a fair chunk. We'll put the bigger parts of the fish in first. This is the Red Throat Emperor. Now what I was gonna say is I've got the temperature set to about medium rare on a flame level. <laughs> I know that's gonna confuse everybody. But if you think of well done as high heat and rare as low heat, I've just got it just below half. So I don't want it too hot. Always cook the fattest part of the fish first. Right. Yeah, there we go. You excited? Are you excited? Yes. <laughs> This is going to be very tasty. I had a little lick of the, the spatula with the potatoes and the garlic on it. And it was yummy! <laughs> you didn't share! <laughs> you were on the toilet! Oops. So that fish has been in there about five minutes, so I reckon the, the bigger pieces are ready to turn over. Let's see what they look like. Yep, enough. This is special yellow broccoli. It um, does that when you're on the boat for a little bit too long. Get the yummy potatoes on there. They smell good. Mm -hmm. They should be good. They're covered in butter and garlic. This is a very large meal. There's a piece of trout for you. Mm -hmm. Piece of bread for an emperor for you. And I believe this cheek is yours. That's my cheek. There's your cheek. There you go. And I will have the other three pieces. snorkeling since about 10 till 3 and we've survived on a chicken drumstick and some trail mix. It's now 5 p.m. so I'm very excited to eat. Would you stop? I'm gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try a piece of coral trout first. Okay. Well, look at that, it's just so soft. Mm. It just flakes right off. Look at that. Mmm. Mm. Very, very soft that trout. Can't say there's any garlic in that. Mm, very fresh. What do you think? Beautiful. Amazing. Whoops. Soft. Mm -hmm. Almost lost my bit of red throat. That's a bit of red throat. I think red throat is a more robust flavour. Definitely a, a more robust texture. I'm yet to try the Have we go. red throat. Have we go, the red throat. Mm -hmm. It's firmer flesh to yeah, yeah, and I think fork you, through. I think you taste that as well. Smells more robust too. Mm, little, little stronger. I have to have another piece of trout, but I think I prefer the red throat. So far, the red red throat's winning. I think so. I'll try a different piece of trout. Let's see. Look at this. This is um really nicely caramelised piece of coral trout. Hmm. Definitely the red throat for me. There's just more fish in it. <laughs> yeah. It's not fishy, it's just more fish. Yeah. More robust. Try the taters quick. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely smell the, um, the garlic and the butter. Mm. Mm, yummy. But not overpowering. Mm 
No. No. Just a hint of garlic. Creamy potatoes. Mm. Oh, they are. Mm. They're silky. Silky's the word. <laughs> silky potatoes. Mm. And we must try this broccolini. Don't want to bore you guys with all this eating. Mm. I'm going for the red throat again. It's mm -hmm. so delicious. Mm. When we're out in the boat, we actually um, miss the greens a little bit. We don't have too many. And they don't last that long, actually. So a nice uh, hit of greens is always really welcome. Mm. But I bet everyone over there wouldn't care which one they ate. <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. So what was your favourite part of this trip? Mm. <laughs> Shall I come back to you? <laughs> come back to me, you go. Well, the answer should be easy. Snorkeling. You like snorkeling? I love snorkeling the most, yeah. of course. Mine was shooting the coral trout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a boy. <laughs> and it's the first time I've used that gun, so christened it with a nice coral trout, 46, 46 centimetres. centimetres. Yeah. Great so. work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, mm. Saw some amazing fish today. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.